energy critical day for creation. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'd like to thank all the previous speakers for giving the talks interesting enough so that we're still here. Uh, I'd like to talk about the <laughs> dynamics of energy critical web equations. Uh, so we are ultimately interested in the dynamics of nonlinear web equations. But before doing that, let us begin with uh, the linear web equation. So if we look at uh, the linear web equation, um, so we take a solution to this linear web equation and try to understand what happens to the solution as time goes to infinity. So for the linear web equation, we have the plan web solutions. Okay, so uh, this guy, this is a plan web solution. So for each psi, this is a function. This is a function of x and t, and it is uh, you can compute. It's a solution to this linear web equation. And this solution, you can observe that it travels with a s fixed speed, uh, with speed one, and in the direction of psi, of, uh, in the direction of psi. Because this is a, a one solution, and then by linearity you can form more solutions. Right? You just uh, linear combine these uh, traveling wave solutions, you get a general solution. Then for this solution, for this solution, if you integrate in by integrate in uh, integration by parts in psi, then you s you get a factor. Right? You integrate in, in part but in psi, you get a factor which is this guy minus one. Oh, uh, actually, I think I have a minus sign here a plus sign here. But anyhow, so that means this guy will be small unless x, uh, this guy is uh, of order one, otherwise be, uh, right. So now this set is contained in the set of x, x such that uh, uh, the modulus of x minus t is of order one. So that means as time goes to infinity, your solution is kind of supported in an annulus at, uh, with uh, radius t with thickness one. So that's the behavior of a linear web. And that annulus has area um, in, in, in three dimensions. That annulus has area 1 over t, so your solution will decay with a fixed rate. So is it for all dimensions? Uh, or uh, this analysis works for all dimensions. But I mean, the decay rate depends on the area of the, of the fixed sphere, which depends on dimension. Uh, so, this is, uh, so that's kind of the, the spreading effect of the of the web, and that's the decaying mechanism for the linear web. So dispersion leads to decay. Okay. So that's what happens to the li linear web. So eventually, so I will call linear web radiation, the free radiation. So eventually, they just decay over time and spread with speed one to infinity. Just, uh, in both right, right. That, yeah, that's uh, just stationary phase. But the situation for nonlinear web could be uh, very different. Because uh, sometimes nonlinearity can f uh, can form uh, some solitons, which uh, do not decay. So uh, then it is hard to capture the linear uh, dispersion effect when you have solutions which do not decay over time. And but for some integral equations, for uh, for example the uh, important KDV equation, modeling the water waves in channel, uh, one can prove that even when uh, there are many traveling waves. You can prove that all solution eventually break up into its traveling waves plus uh, radiation. So the radiation is just the solution to linear, so the linear problem. And then this is broadly called uh, the solution resolution conjecture. For any solution, eventually it breaks up into its traveling wave plus radiation. But the techniques for uh, proving this is uh, very specific to the to the integrable equations and uh, uh, do not apply in a general case. Now, um, in order to understand the, what happens for the non-integrable uh, equations, that we can consider many models. And uh, in this talk, I will focus on the, this simplest uh, possible model. You have this linear wave equation with this nonlinearity in three dimensions. This five appears naturally because uh, in this case, the conserved energy is dimensionless. Okay, so that, that's why this five appears. Uh, so this is basically you, you have linear wave equation and you, you uh, add a nonlinearity to it so that you, you can have some non-trivial dynamics. So this is the equation we will consider. Uh, important feature for this equation is that you have many, infinite many actually, steady states, okay, which are just time independent solutions. So these are solutions do not decay over time. This is uh, uh, opposite to the linear dispersion uh, phenomenon. So this, this is just these are uh, solutions, but they don't, they don't decay at all. Can you explain to me why would it disperse at this verbal? Right. So the equation comes up with, uh, comes with uh, natural conserved energy. Ah. 
and you want to uh, to make things scale in the right way so that the energy is scale invariant. So that, that that's uh, what you have to report there. So these have many steady states, and if the equation also is invariant on the many symmetries. Uh, oops, where is the light? It is uh, invariant on the translation and scaling uh, symmetry, but also on the Lorentz trans transform. It's a wave equation, so it is uh, uh, invariant on the Lorentz transformations. Uh, so if you combine this Lorentz transformation with uh, the steady states, you get a traveling wave solution. You, you have a steady state, and you apply Lorentz transform <coughs> to it, then, this, then it becomes traveling wave. It travels with direction L, in the direction of L, with speed less than one. Okay. So in this talk, I will consider the so-called, where is the light? Oh, okay. Uh, we'll consider the type two solutions only. So these solutions are the solutions which are bounded in the energy space for all times, even though it could blow up. So the reason for this is I want to really see, we want to really see the wave behavior, not the ODE behavior. The, the, solu the equation is, uh, is quite brutal. It can have uh, ODE behavior, so I want to rule that out. So we will only consider these type of solutions. Okay. So there are rich dynamics for type two uh, solutions. For example, if you take a solution which is sufficiently small, I mean, it's, although it's a nonlinear solution, but eventually it becomes linear in the sense that it uh, asymptotically approaches a linear solution. So that's what that's uh, that's what we call scatter. Right? It's uh, uh, the linear nonlinear solution asymptotically gets asymptotically close to a linear solution. That's a scattering concept. And then you have traveling waves. These solutions are also type two, but uh, they do not scatter. The scatter is uh, the, they decay to zero everywhere. So, but it's uh, these traveling waves, they do not decay to zero everywhere. So these are not, these are not the heavy. And then the other behavior is the blow up solutions. So the solution could blow up by uh, concentrating <coughs> the energy into smaller and smaller regions. So you could uh, rescale itself so that uh, uh, it concentrates energy in infinitesimally small regions in finite time. In that case, uh, we call it the blow up. So there are many different phenomena. Now, we want to understand the dynamics of all these solutions. Uh, so then we have this uh, conjecture called solution resolution conjecture that says if you take any solution, which is type two, then it can be decomposed as a uh, finite sum of these traveling waves and the linear wave, which is just radiation, and then a term which goes to zero in energy space. So as time goes to maximum time distance. So you have this cartoon picture uh, if you take an arbitrary solution, initially it could be extremely complicated, uh, and then evolve for a long time. Then what happens is that it decouples into these, uh, these several traveling waves, which travels in various directions, but with speed less than one. And then these free radiations, which, uh, oops, which uh, travels with speed one. So uh, these guys are simultaneously decoupled from each other. Okay, it's, uh, and also the traveling waves, yeah, they, so this guy travels, this, this guy is travel faster yeah, these, uh, these tr linear waves travel faster than the traveling waves. The traveling waves travel with speed less than one. So that's the, that's the conjecture that we want to ultimately prove. Uh, so this is a mathematical statement. The solution is de decoupled into, sorry, it doesn't work very well. Uh, the solution is decoupled into this uh, final sum of traveling waves plus uh, free radiation, the solution to linear wave equation, which decays over time, and a term which vanishes asymptotically in the energy space. I'm confused. You assume there is no blow up? It could blow up, actually. The blow up, but in the blow up, you also, the, the, it blows up also in the way that it concentrates its traveling waves. You're using the H1 norm, though, I take it. Right, the H1 norm is okay. But, but there could be higher ones than that. Right, so say the, if, if it concentrates, the H1 norm is bounded by H2 norm, would it blow up? Mm -hmm. So it, it could blow up. And this conjecture has actually has been solved in a radio case in three dimensions by Dukal, Kenning, and Mel. Radio uh, mouse. Uh, the, if the solution is radio, yes, mm -hmm. it's spherically radio. And I would like to talk about, uh, just mention one crucial new idea in that proof. <laughs> that is, uh, that's a, a simple property for the linear web that we can all understand. So that is um, the so-called channel of energy inequality. So if so take a solution, a radio solution to the linear wave equation, and then you look at the energy outside of this growing light cone. Okay, 
it be considered as energy. Now this energy is bounded from below by a fixed portion of the total energy. Okay. So what this so this is true for all positive times or all negative times. And the distinction between all positive time and negative time is, is uh, important because you have a possible possibly you have tra uh, incoming waves or outgoing waves. For outgoing waves, this will be true for positive time, or incoming waves, it will be true for negative times. And uh, what this tells us is that uh, for the linear radio solution, uh, you have a fixed portion of the energy which moves out with speed exactly equal to one. Right? And that's not finite speed propagation, because finite speed propagation tells you that the energy moves out with speed at most one. But now this inequality uh, tells you that a fixed portion of the energy moves out with speed exactly equal to one. And that turns out to be very important and from this, they obtain a very good dynam global dynamical characterization of the steady state, which says that if you, you take any solution, if the solution is not a steady state, then you have the chain of energy, which tells you, physically speaking, that it will emit energy into spatial infinity. Okay? Yes, if you have a steady state, then, of course, it does not emit energy. But if, you ha if the solution is not steady state, then it must emit energy. And uh, it's uh, almost, a physical, almost a physical statement you know. But so okay, but this uh, chain of energy inequality is not uh, robust enough in the non-radio case, and the non-radio case it is uh, much lo less understood. So what, what you want to do is some kind of investment energy, yeah. right? Some, something like yes. So basically, you ask the question: Is my solution close to the solid to the steady state or not? If not, then I will emit energy. And then you ask the question again after some time. And then you, if not, it's still emit energy. But there's only so many energy you can emit. And in the end, you end up in that con configuration. <coughs> but this argument does not work uh, in the non-radio case. So in the non-radio case, the problem is still open. And we only have a partial result. And the partial result, this is very complicated, but the partial result simply tells us that the conjecture is true along a sequence of times. Okay. So basically, let's consider the final blow-up case. Uh, so if suppose your solution blows up in finite time, then you have this singularity cone, and outside this is a blow up time. Then outside of the singularity cone, you, the solution is regular. So everything that is it, non-trivial happens in this, inside this cone. Then the theorem tells us that along, oops, well, sometimes does not uh, tell. Uh, it, it should depend on data, but I don't know how it depends on the data. But we eventually want to prove it is true for all times. So uh, along a sequence of times, the solution will focus several traveling waves. Okay. So there are several traveling waves inside this small cone. Uh, and uh, there's no other possible energy concentration. Okay. All the energy will concentrate on these traveling waves. And so no other possible con uh, concentration of energy. And uh, that's what we know for now. And in fact, in this proof, we also crucially use the chain of energy. Because if uh, for the experts here, um, somehow we firstly we ensure that all the energy inside the cone is concentrated on the traveling waves, but somehow there is this ghost energy which co could concentrate on the boundary. Actually, that's one of the most difficult questions in the, in the wave map case. But uh, we can use chain of energy to show that this is not possible because if it is like this, then it will shoot energy backwards to time zero, and that implies concentration of energy for initial time, which is uh, not possible because initial energy cannot, initial data is a fixed function, cannot concentrate energy uh, at arbitrarily small scales. So the next uh, goal would be to prove this conjecture, would, to prove this is true for all times, and um, uh, extend the result to other models, possibly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.